I'm not even going to pretend that I knew what browsing the internet was like in the 90s. I was born in the same year George Bush Jr. assumed office, and I had the privilege of being introduced to the internet when it looked like this. So, like, remember when browsers had toolbars? Yeah, so, like, Internet Explorer had the option to just add little toolbars and other bullshit to it. You had to add the Google toolbar, the Yahoo toolbar, your antivirus had a fucking toolbar. Too lazy to type the URL for eBay? Bam, eBay toolbar. There was so many of these damn toolbars, it was ridiculous. Sometimes you download software and it would automatically download one on your browser. You wanted an MP3 downloader? Alright, but here's Ask Jeeves. It's now your homepage. But now look, here's Google Chrome. Look at it, plain and simple. Look at it compared to Internet Explorer. There's only one search bar, the Omni bar. It combines the search bar and the URL bar. And you can add other search engines into this thing, including eBay. No more stupid toolbars. You can just search other websites without cluttering up your screen. This is the way the internet was meant to be browsed. This video is for everyone who likes Google Chrome and thinks Firefox sucks. Instead of toolbars extending the functionality of your browser, there's now extensions. Hundreds of extensions on the Chrome store that let you control your experience. You hate ads? Boom. You block origin. You hate looking at the color white? Boom. Dark reader. Hate how 4chan looks like it was last updated in 2005? No? Well, do you want cute anime girls on the bottom left? Boom. 4chan X and Odichan. The internet is now yours. And it's incredible. Other people have explained the origins of Firefox better than I ever could, so I'm not even gonna bother. But in a nutshell, after Microsoft completely fucked over Netscape through a series of anti-competitive tactics, the whole suite of Netscape tools was forked into what we now know today. Netscape Navigator is now Firefox, Netscape Mail is now Thunderbird, this is the power of open source, taking some guy's dead bones and turning it into your 6th grade science class's model skeleton. And once more, people have forked Firefox as well. Waterfox is Firefox, but it maintains support for legacy extensions. Pale Moon is Firefox from 12 years ago, and it's for furries. Tor is a fork of Firefox for schizos. There are so many cool Firefox forks, like holy shit, how many different ways are there to browse the web? Getting back on the topic of Chrome. This video is for everyone who likes Google Chrome. Chrome is open source too, and believe me when I say this, Chrome has a metric shit ton of forks. I mean... Honestly, though, most of them are actually completely dog shit, but... <laughs> now I'm sure if I sat and poked in the sand all day, I would find a horrible, horrible amount of Firefox forks that are really terrible, too. I mean, who actually needs Pale Moon? Firefox forks never managed to make it mainstream. You will most likely never see anyone use these in public, because people who use these are usually off the deep end. Opera used to be based off its own proprietary engine, Presto, up until 2013 when it decided to just be Chrome but with a whole bunch of amazing features like a sketchy VPN and Facebook Messenger for some reason. But it does have one cool thing, y you can install Chrome extensions on- because it's Chrome, it's just fucking Chrome guys. Y you want a VPN so bad, just buy more of that, it's like 5 bucks a month, like seriously. Um, but this is a theme with a lot of Chrome forks, where they just pile a whole bunch of shit that your browser doesn't need, and call it power user features. As an example, Vivaldi, or Vivaldi, Vivaldi, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a browser made by the same guy who made Opera. Okay, okay, so, I'm sorry if the audio sounds really weird, I'm recording this while I'm editing, and I just realized... Vivaldi, or however you pronounce this stupid fucking name, the reason why the browser's called Vivaldi is because Vivaldi made classical music, and classical music is played in operas, and the guy, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really stupid, yeah. And it's extremely customizable. So many options, so many choices. Truly the Swiss army knife of all the chrome forks. But I think it's absolutely super as hell. But maybe you don't, and that's totally fine. But do you really need a built-in mail client or a note-taking app? Like some of these features in here, you could literally install an extension and call it a day. Vivaldi is so cheeky with its advertising on its blog too, and it tells you that it doesn't even track you. And um, that actually leads me to another Chrome fork that I wanted to talk about. Brave! It's another fork of Chrome, but this one has a selling point. Privacy! It blocks ads, it blocks various technologies that are used to keep a fingerprint on you. It's almost like, like this fork actually does something worthwhile, and while I don't necessarily like its so-called Tor mode, because I think you'd be better off just using Tor itself, 
Um, it's not bad. Uh, I, I'm not too into crypto either, so I can't really comment much on the basic attention token stuff, the bat tokens. Uh, I don't think it'll ever catch on as an alternative to ads, but you know, whatever. Uh, Brave gets at least like five cookies from the cookie jar or whatever. <laughs> um, this leads me to the last browser I want to mention. Opera GX is a browser for gamers? You see, I always thought racists would prefer the anonymity of Tor, but Opera GX jumps right in with no place to hide. The browser advertises itself as the first web browser designed with gamers in mind. It keeps Discord and Twitch in a sidebar, uh, advertises amazing gamer-inspired features like like privacy protection of the forced dark mode, video pop-out, free VPNs, and an ad block. Here's the thing. A lot of these browsers are trying to cram as many features as they possibly can, and many of these features can already be found on the Chrome Web Store or your operating system. There is literally nothing inherently gamer about Opera GX except for maybe the theming, which uses colors associated with gamers. Like, my goodness, who is this browser for anyway? Who even asked for any of them? Excuse me, sir? Huh? Who, who's that? Why, it would be I, Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. That's right. I was the one behind all of these horrible browsers all along. No one ever respected me. They tried to get rid of me in 2005, and now I'm going to make everyone pay. That was horrible. Why, why did I do that?